um, to have a hundreds winner at Group 1. Uh, the Garden Province is a race that I've always wanted to win. Um, you know, I remember when I was a young apprentice to Rolf Rix and we won the Garden Province with a filly called Bombarda. And that was very special to us. And um, you know, I've always wanted to win this race, especially being on July Day. It's absolutely awesome. But to win the July is going to be the absolute pinnacle of my career. And, and I don't know if I'll ever do that again. Well, hopefully we will. But um, uh, it's amazing also. You know, it's an amazing story. I mean, he was born on my, my racing estate in Achterpol. Um, but it's my mother-in-law who keeps a couple of mares and um, we, we fold it down for her. And um, in the first hour of being born, I said, my son said to me, this is the best one we've ever bred. And he said, um, and he's going to be a true champion. Can I please name him? And he named him Big City Lights. I'm totally grateful for that because it's a, right, a real nice catchy you name. Know? But we've had a great season. I mean, Lady Windermere hasn't put a foot wrong. Uh, you know, to win two group twos, two group ones in, in one season is, is phenomenal. Um, I've just really had a great, great season. I've got a great team backing me up from my wife, who, who, who is um, stalwart of, 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 of uh, the stable, to amazing, amazing um, staff members that work with me, Fricky. Um, he, he's, a, he's an absolute workaholic. And to my two guys back at my, you know, my two assistants back in, in, in Cape Town, Adele and, and uh, Michael, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard for them not to be in all the limelight they'd like to be here, but they've got 100 horses to look after and doing a fantastic job there. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful. And, and to my grooms who, who work exceptionally hard, they don't get the recognition they deserve. It's really fantastic. Um, it's just been an awesome, awesome season, and I couldn't ask for anything more. Let me, let me just ask you, one of the tactics, because Big City Life early in the season, looked one of the horses, hold up, strong finish, big change in the last two races. Well, you know, he's such a versatile horse, and that's when champions really are versatile. And the way we looked at it, we, we, why should we give away weight, you know, give away ground if we had a light weight? Um, we thought that there wasn't going to be much pace, and then those horses that, um, that were drawn on our inside, we didn't, want to, we didn't want them to be in front of us because we didn't think they'd pull us through into the straight. Um, it's a great loss to my stable to lose a professional jockey like Greg Chino. When I say professional, I mean in every, in every word. He has studied the tapes, he has rewound them, he has backwound them, he's done everything. And um, we, you know, we, we've had two weeks of discussing of how we're going to do it. And, and I left it to him to come back with a final analysis, and, and he was absolutely spot on. His assumption was spot on. I mean, he, he's a true professional in every aspect, and I wish him all the best of luck in Hong Kong. And I really feel he's going to find his niche there because they are a very um, structured um, nation, and they they, 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 they they like the professionalism that, that he's going to bring with. And I haven't had the pleasure of working with another jockey like this, uh, with respect to the other guys. He is absolutely different division. Um, he had the race worked out to the last minute, and if things didn't go as planned in A, then um, he had a plan B. So it's really, really phenomenal. And I think two points of vindication for yourself. Before the July, everybody talking about three rolls not up to scratch, how strong is the form? Big City Life will answer the question no on certain terms. And the Lady Windermere, would she, wouldn't she stay? Particularly sweet, I think, to put those doubts to rest. Well, you know, I mean, I said, you know, I wasn't going to try and silence the critics. I mean, they, I mean, isn't it isn't it ironic that the three-year-olds run first, second, and third, and a two-year-old, a three-year-old filly that running second? But you know, you can only beat who you, who you run against. And the fact that the higher-rated uh, three-year-olds ran below par, and and, 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 a, and a young up-and-coming horse like uh, um, the Cox horse that ran second to the beginnings. And, and in the, the, the derby, you know, um, Dan Log, I mean, he came and franked the form. Um, I knew that he was as good. And, you know, and Robbie Hill once said to me, and they were very, very good words, and I'll never have forgotten, don't worry about what they say, go with what you know. And we knew he's a, he's a champion, we knew he's a freak. I mean, he's just something different class. And I must say, Freaky Khaelan rode him for the first time, and he said, he, he got up, he said, this is the best I've ridden since was Chestnut. And that was a huge statement. He said, and we will win the July this year, just, you know, the feel that he gave him. That's amazing, and, and um, uh, Lady Windermere, we tried to make her stay as a young two-year-old, but she was a very immature filly, and uh, she needed time to strengthen up. So we put her away, brought her out, and she never put a foot wrong. And she just had to learn to circle. You know, she's a really talented filly, and um, I had no doubt she'd get the mile, especially at this track with a short running. She's got a, a kick like no other filly's got, and um, I, I'm really, really delighted for a wonderful pa partnership. Um, I, I couldn't ask for better owners if I tried. And thank you very much to them for allowing me to, to run her uh, the way I have and, and, and to prepare her. And uh, yeah, that's all I really want to say. Thanks. One final